All right, man, so we're almost to the halfway point of the first XFL season. And I ain't gonna lie, some of these narratives out here, they running kind of wild, bro. Today, we're gonna, of course, recap week four in the XFL, kind of see how all the teams are looking. And we're gonna take a look at the TV ratings. And I'm not gonna lie, a steady decline is a bit concerning, but does this spell doom for the XFL like some publications are reporting or is it much ado about nothing? Today, I'm gonna dive in, kind of take a peek, give you my opinion, and then in the comment section, I'ma need yours. Without further ado, y'all already know what time it is. Ladies and gentlemen, Chulu Wayne. Yeah, you'll never know quitter, cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go get her. So week four brought us three games that were decided by one possession, and then there was a blowout. Let's start out with the battle with Texas. As amazing as PJ Walker and Cam Phillips have been all year, this game was about Houston's defense. They forced Dallas's quarterback Landry Jones into four turnovers, and I ain't gonna lie, early on, it looked like it was about to be a lot more than that. Landry was also injured later in the game, but the MRIs came back and it looks like it's not too serious. As it's been reported that he should only be out a few weeks. Now, a few weeks might sound like a fairly serious injury, but trust me, bro, if you saw it when it happened, it looked like a season ender. Based on his reaction, I thought he was done. Anyway, Houston was able to hold on and win 27-20, and they're now 4-0, sitting as the lone undefeated XFL team. Next up, we got the Battle Hawks versus the Seattle Dragons. This game started out looking like a blowout. It was 17-3 in the second quarter, but they made a QB change and inserted BJ Daniels for the Dragons, and it really gave them a spark. One from an energy standpoint, because dude was all in the defense's face. He was trying to run over Cassie, he's still farming Cassie. The dude was not playing no games when he got in. So that got the team going, but also just his ability, man, his mobility and his ability to pass the ball, like just move the offense as a whole. We've seen this a lot in the XFL so far where that mobile quarterback style has really dominated the majority of the games. And the mobile quarterbacks who've done the best are guys who can pass, but can also move. Just the threat of the run being there and their ability to extend plays. I mean, it's really made all the difference. If you look at the top two teams in the league, they have the top two quarterbacks in the league that we've been talking about this whole time. So it'll be interesting to see if BJ Daniels can become one of those guys. Now, BJ's only problem is Jordan Tayamu is already one of those guys, okay? He's already one of those guys. And to be frank, dude wasn't going. He was poised out there, he was in control out there. He completed 74% of his passes, threw for 264 yards, a touchdown, no turnovers, and then had an additional 63 yards on the ground, not to mention the option yardage that obviously doesn't go toward his stats, but we all know how important a quarterback is on that play. So thanks in large part to that, the Battle Hawks were able to hold on to win 23-16 versus the Seattle Dragons. Next up, we got the Tampa Bay Vipers who get their first win of the year versus a team that is honestly kind of in free fall right now, the DC Defenders. The Vipers not only get their first win, but they do it in dramatic fashion, 25 to zero versus a team that was considered one of, if not the top team in the league. If we just rewind a couple of weeks, go back to week two, DC was looking like that deal. Now they've dropped two in a row. They just lost to Tampa Bay 25 to nothing. Cardio Jones has continued to play pretty poorly over the last two weeks. And I saw hella Defenders fans over on Twitter calling for a QB change about halfway through this one. Unlike a lot of the other successful teams in the league, the Vipers actually come at you a little bit different. They kill you with the run game. They had two running backs, Devion Smith and Jaquez Patrick, who both went over 100 yards on the ground. Also, that Vipers defense is nasty, bro. They flying all over the field. And I said the other week, if this team could continue to play like they played versus Houston, they was gonna definitely get that zero out of their win column, and they was able to do that, bro. I'm not sure what switch they flipped, but this Vipers team, they, they got one win, bro. They're one and three, but they look dangerous. All I'm, that's all I'm saying. Like, I'm not excited about playing the Vipers going forward. You feel me? All right, man, here's the standings. Houston sitting at first place in the West at four and oh. Dallas sitting behind them at two and two. 
Then we jump over to the East. You got St. Louis at the top three and one. And despite the fact that DC and New York are two and two and are second and third over in the East respectively, a lot of people's power rankings actually have the Vipers creeping up above one or both of these teams just based on the way they've played over the past two weeks so that's what's up man we gotta watch out for this vipers team they might be you know trying to make a little jump you feel me it's 10 games on the season four teams get in no team is eliminated from playoff contention at this point that's actually pretty exciting to me because i thought i could just call most of these games and how they was gonna go but to see teams make these adjustments and and actually get better and some teams like dc seemingly get worse it's just interesting because i don't know which way this is gonna go week to week all right all right man let's talk about these tv ratings and the concerning thing is that it is actually a fact that the TV ratings have slowly declined each week. Week one across all games, they had 12 million viewers. We knew that number was going to drop in week two, not a big deal. Week two, it dropped down to 8 million. But then in week three, it dropped down to 6.4 million. And in week four, it dropped to about 5.5 million. Now, I do want to point out that one of the four games actually had better ratings than the previous week, and that was the game on FS1. They actually had the Houston versus Dallas game, so they saw an 11% increase in viewership over the previous week. But again, the other three games were slightly down. When you look at it like that, yes, there is some cause for concern. It has gone down every week. That's a fact. But if you just look at week four, their lowest week so far, these are actually still really solid numbers, okay? And the XFL went head to head with the NFL combine and won. The XFL drew more viewers than the NFL combine, bro. So the steady decline is not pretty. That's a fact. But... If the XFL leveled out right where they're at right now, they'd be fine. They'd be completely happy with that. They still haven't had a game do less than a million viewers, even on FS1, even on ESPN2, even when they're not on the ABCs and the Foxes and the ESPN. Still not one game under a million views. That's good. That's better than the Combine. That's better than the MLS. That's better than a lot of baseball games. That's better than a lot of hockey games. That's they're still doing pretty damn good, okay? On Saturday, the game on Fox pulled in 1.8 million viewers. On that exact same day, NCAA basketball game on the same station only did about 700,000. The MLS only about 700,000 and the NFL combined a little less than a mil. They were only outdone by an NBA game, barely. You're talking 2.3 million viewers versus 1.8. And there was also an NCAA game and a PGA, which is golf to do 1.9 million viewers and 1.7 million viewers once again. Once again, we're talking about the XFL standing up with those guys, 1.8 and 1.5, bro. That is damn good, dog. That's damn good good they're doing fine so overall the ratings actually look pretty good the thing that doesn't look good though is that steady decline so it just really depends on how you look at it and while we can take a lot from this we don't get a definitive answer okay we still don't get a definitive answer week five marks the halfway point we'll know more if this thing continues to drop and we start to get games drop under a mil for the first time I think that'll be a little bit more alarming. Really hoping it steadies out though, man. If it steadies out right where it's at, the XFL looks like it would actually be fine. I'm actually encouraged by the fact that even the ESPN2 game still got over a million viewers. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a pretty big deal. And this week we got our first, I guess, official primetime game up. There's an eight o'clock game or nine o'clock Eastern game on ESPN, the main ESPN channel. We'll see what that one does. That should help the TV ratings a bit because that's in a pretty good spot. At the same time, we do have March Madness coming up. You got NBA teams fighting for playoff positioning. Like that's going on right now. So there are some concerns for sure. All we can really do if we want the league to succeed is support, tell a friend about it, watch the game, hope it does well. And you know, we'll be back here same time next week, going over the numbers and seeing if we think the league can stand the test of time or if it would go the way of the AAF. Now, speaking of the AAF, if we take the smallest XFL games from week four compared to the biggest AAF games in week four, it's not even close. Um, so basically, if we compare week four AAF games on NFL Network to week four XFL games on FS1 and ESPN2, you can see right here, 
more than double more than double that number so when comparing to the aaf even if we just use these smaller channels which bring in less viewers for the xfl they're still doubling what the aaf was doing by this same point in the season so you know that's a pretty big deal that's that's a good sign anyway i don't want this thing to go on too long so i guess i'm gonna go ahead and end it here guy hit me up in the comment section what do you think do you think the xfl's numbers are going to go ahead and stabilize you think they're gonna maybe pick back up in the second half of the season or do you think they'll continue to drop let me know what y'all think my name is from raps i'm gonna holler at you next time fellas one yeah.